good morning everyone so i just want to check if you are able to hear my voice okay so let's start the session just give me one second okay so good morning everyone um, i am navneet bihani so something about me i have close to 13 years of experience and i am currently working at bcg that's boston consulting group i have been associated with the edu christine for the last 8 years wherein i have been taking different classes Uh, like frm financial modeling but of late i have been involved mainly into financial risk management right so in today's session i will um, walk you through uh, through various um, nitty gritties of frm level 1 and why risk management is essentially the key certification in times of uncertainty uh, uncertainty that we are living in right so any point in time if you have any questions regarding risk regarding how frm can help you uh, scale up the curve uh, feel free to pause and let me know so that i can answer all your queries right so frm is essentially a a, a risk management program which is uh, uh, spearheaded by carp that is global association of risk professionals right and um, garp was installed around two and a half decades back but um, i i guess it was only after the crisis of 2007 2008 when um, most of the companies realized that uh, risk management needs to be taken care of separately right so prior to prior to the lehman brothers crisis most of the banks most of the companies never thought about risk management as a key key uh, area of uh, key area of organization 
so risk management was there but it was integrated mainly into existing practices right it was never taken as a silo uh, or a separate uh, separate thread in the different in different verticals of the organizations right so only after lehman brothers crisis major leaders across across different organizations and mainly mainly in banks they realized that um, they need to have a separate risk management branch right in order to survive so it was more reactive approach rather than a proactive approach that led to evolvement of the risk management right and that's how frm slowly gained a lot of traction in organizations in banks and in insurance companies and almost everywhere now risk is considered to be a very key area uh, key area of focus for most of the organizations so as i said gap was founded around two and a half decades back in 1996 right and it um, has it currently has around uh, 250 thousand members close to 250000 members frm serves as a benchmark for competency in risk management and and more importantly financial risk management right so when i say benchmark most of the people who look to hire for risk management they look for this for this certification right and and the scope is not only related to to banks right major majority of it is in banks but but their insurance companies regulatory organized regular uh, regulators securities regulators hedge funds it companies when i talk about it companies they require business analysts who who have key focus on risk management area so that they can build risk management products right and then you have credit rating agencies right which also use um, frm certification to evaluate candidates right and and more importantly in times of uncertainty that we are living in and especially in covid 19 cases most of organizations most of the organizations have responded uh, reactively as i said instead of being proactive so going forward in the next 4 or 5 years the scale at which frm certification is going to rise it will be unprecedented and my guess is it will be exponential and i have been saying it for the last one one and a half years right that the growth of frm is going to scale up and this is the time uh, when most of the people are realizing it and they are going for this certification right so the demand is huge right huge would be an understatement um, and supply is very limited right so there's a huge scope for growth in this area okay so let's talk about some technicalities of of uh, of the certification so let me open the whiteboard so that's clear for you so frm is mainly divided into two levels level 1 and level 2 level 1 focuses on lot of key areas but not very very specific to risk right so when i say not very very specific to risk i mean level 1 builds up your base in risk management whereas level 2 it is hardcore risk so there will be there will be uh, separate topics on credit risk market risk operational risk and other two or three parameters on which you will be evaluated whereas level 1 has got four key areas quants financial markets and products which is fmp value at risk which is var and foundations of risk management 
also acronymed as form right so these are the key key areas which um, which are generally um, required for a candidate to to go through to build to build his or her base in level 1 for fm and once he builds up the base then he can study for level 2 right so before we get into um, into the nitty gritties of it what what type of what type of topic is uh, is quants uh, fmp value at risk or risk management we need to also consider the fact that you can appear for both the levels simultaneously right so in the best case you can clear the exam at one shot and get your certification right but that's generally not the trend people first appear for level 1 they build up their base and then they go go for level 2 right but again as i said there is nothing that stops you from appearing for both the levels on the same day right also one of the key features of frm level 1 and level 2 is if you're appearing for both the levels simultaneously then unless and until you clear level 1 your level 2 papers will not be checked right so even though even you might be performing very well you might have performed very well in level 2 but if you have if you, if if you have not performed well in level 1 then your level 2 papers will not be evaluated right so that's the main reason why people don't give both the levels simultaneously but again if you have if you have got time and if you have and if you think that you can study for both the levels simultaneously you can appear at one go in one day and clear both the levels right there is no eligibility criteria right so even an undergraduate can appear for level 1 right so let's get into um, the key areas of level 1 so frm certification is an mcq level is is an mcq type questions uh, is it uh, sorry it's an mcq type certification where uh, wherein you will have 100 questions for level 1 right now this 100 questions each of these is a is a mcq type with only one correct answer right so there will be only one correct answer there will be no negative marking right and so just give me a second i am getting a call from ed pristi guys are you able to hear me please raise your hand if you are able to hear me okay yeah i was also talking about if you can see my video because i can see myself okay cool sir great fine so uh, where were we yeah there are 100 questions right and there's only one correct answer per question there's no negative marking right so most of the people take this very lightly that if there is no negative marking you can guess as much as you can but the problem with that is if it's a, if it's if there is no negative marking for you there is no negative marking for others also right so the frm level 1 and level 2 both are evaluated relatively so there is a relative marking concept relative marking concept right then now what does this mean let's let's discuss this so relative marking concept basically means that there is no fixed pass marks right it all depends upon how others are performing in the exam so it might happen that the exam is really very difficult but you might be surprised that you clear the, you have cleared the exam the reason being if it's difficult for you provided you have read thoroughly if it's difficult for you it is difficult for everyone else also who is going to study the who is going to study almost the same way 
they will they will study from the same books they will study uh, they will most probably solve the same set of mock papers questions so if it's difficult for you it will be difficult for almost everyone right also there's a uh, there's a, a concept of quartiles now what does that mean is if there are 100 people appearing for the exam then for each of these subjects you will be ranked in order of your performance right so that means top 25 people right will get quartile 1 the next 25 will get quartile 2 the third next will get quartile 3 and the worst 25 will get quartile 4 right so quartile 4 essentially means that you have not performed well or let's say you have not performed up to the expectations of garb in that particular area right so there are four areas uh, which garb evaluates you upon right and if you score quartile 4 in any one of these areas chances are i mean 99% in fact i would say 100% there is a chance that you will not clear the exam because quartile 4 essentially means that you have not performed at all as per the garb expectation right so the safe uh, safe bet which i generally recommend students is if you get quartile 2 in all the subjects right then you can clear the exam right so i have also seen people who have not cleared the exam with just quartile 3 in one of the topics right so to be on the safer side it's good if you have quartile 2 in all the four uh, areas that cop tests you upon right quants is the first area which we generally begin with right followed by fmp then value at risk and foundations of risk management is something which we take towards the end right quants has 20% weightage which means out of 100 questions you will be getting 20 questions fmp has uh, 30% weightage 30 questions value at risk also 30 questions foundations of risk management 20% right so that that basically means that um, the weightage assigned to each of these subjects are in the ratio 2 is to 3 is to 3 is to 2 right and just because you have less number of questions from quants or risk management that doesn't mean you need you will have to study or you have to give less focus on that particular topic so focus should be on all the four topics because if you score quartile 4 in any one of these topics you will probably not clear the exam right even if you have scored quartile 1 in the remaining three topics you will still have a very slim chance to i will say no chance to clear the exam right so i have couple of questions which um, which some of you have asked uh, is there any exemption exemption in paper for a qualified ca or semi qualified ca no absolutely not so there is no exemption there are only two papers you have to clear both the papers and after clearing both the levels you need to show that you have experience in finance right when i say fin essentially they want experience in risk management but if you have experience in finance you can always you know mold that experience towards risk so they ask around 2 and 2 and a half years of work experience post which you can use frm charter against your name right so that is that is the criteria which uh, f which garp asks now november batch exam will be held yes still now we have got no clarification on whether the exam will not be held so that essentially means that we have the exam on in the in the month of november third saturday of november so that's on the cards definitely okay the third question is how to register for the exam and what is the preparation time right so see it all depends upon 
your background so there's no fixed answer to it so if you tell me that you have good hold on quants if you if you are saying that you know if if i assume that you you have uh, some basic understanding about uh, financial markets like futures forwards options right bonds if you have basic idea about it then i would say uh, 3 months should be enough right and and i i would say 3 months uh, when you are taking tuitions right if you are studying alone i mean you will have to uh, you will have to take more time right if you are a fresher if you have or well, let's say fresher in terms of knowledge right uh if you do not have any understanding about these topics or it might have been you know long time back that you have studied these topics i would suggest you need to have at least 4 4 and a half months right? to be on the safer side 5 months because you need to clear you need to cover the syllabus then you need to practice a lot mock series something which education also also helps you in right so 3 3 and a half months if you have some background and 5 months if you do not have any background provided you take necessary classroom training right or any training in frm okay another question will ce article ship be treated as experience or only corporate no ce article ship is not treated as an experience okay how many months can both the papers be cleared in general uh see again that's a very subjective question and i don't have a fixed answer for everyone so again it all depends upon what kind of experience you have what is your educational background right but even but nonetheless if you are planning to appear for both the levels simultaneously uh if you can spare 5 hours every day and along with that um, the tuitions right i would say uh, probably 7 months should be good enough 7 to 8 months yep okay the training program will be held online or offline so currently um, given the situations we have right we will be conducting uh, most of the sessions online all the classes will be recorded and um, you will be getting all the recordings also with the support from faculty so if you have experience you you just need to clear the exam that's it and how do you register you can register directly from the carp website uh, i will discuss about the tuition fees i uh, will discuss about what is the registration fees later when we get there right so on the question uh, i have cleared frm level 1 can i apply for level 2 yes you can apply for level 2 but uh, unfortunately you will have to register you have to pay the registration fees because registration fees is valid only for one year so that is something which you need to again cross check but yeah you can appear because you can appear for level 2 only in 2020 because um, there's a four year four year window in which you can clear both the levels so if you have appeared in level appeared for level 1 in 2017 then 2021 is the last when you can appear for level 2 right if you can if you do not clear level 2 by 2021 then you need to again appear for level 1 and level 2 both okay another question will working at a proprietary trading firm be considered for frm charter definitely yes. it will definitely serve as an experience no doubt about it how many marks can we can clear level 1 again as i said it's a relative marking right if the exam is very easy and you score let's say 70 out of 100 you 
can still not clear the exam right because it all depends upon how others are performing if if others have performed better than you then you will not clear the exam it's as simple as that that's what the relative marking concept is okay another question i have just passed class 12 is it advisable to give frm in my first year of graduation i have a keen interest in finance and i'm also looking for cfa later with mba should i go for frm in first two years yes this is the right time the reason being you cannot appear for cfa right now right any any which way right so it's better you prepare for frm you get your uh, you get your understanding clear because there's a good overlap between frm's syllabus and cfa level one syllabus so when we talk about quants and fmp if you covered uh, if you if you understand fmp of level one frm the cfa uh, certain portion of it will definitely be uh, be much much easier again the quants of FR frm has 90 percent overlap with cfa quants right so so that way you will have you will have good overlap between these two subjects certification and i will strongly advise that if you are undergraduate and if you are looking for any finance certification then you should go for frm okay i have experience of over 10 years in equity market uh, how will it help see if you have a experience in equity market risk management area whether i mean i i, I guess you are a trader right uh, equities and derivatives so um, it will help you to boost your cv right and if you're if you're expecting that you can change your field after working for 10 years right in one industry and just with frms frm certification if you're thinking that you can change your change your line of uh, i mean if you can change your industry or totally 100 percent it's it's not possible Right. And let me be very clear with it because I don't want to give any false assumption. The reason being, you have 10 years of experience in certain areas. People would want you to use your expertise in that area. With FRM, you can switch between different verticals of the same industry. Right. So that is something which you need to you need to decide. Right. And with the help of FRM, you can grow up the ladder. Right, so FRM will act as a catalyst. But if you are expecting that for with, with the help of FRM you can switch industries, then that will be too much to ask for. Okay. Then um, another question is: I have experience in in a bank risk control unit, and currently working in a life insurance sector yes you can go for for frm and within life insurance or within risk you can you can switch between different departments easily that is something which you can do other question i am currently working um, sorry i'm currently doing uh, my second year mcom in finance and i would like to join classes after mcom but do not have any work experience see work experience is something which you can always submit to garp within five years right so that is something which which uh, which garp gives you the leverage of five years right so once you clear frm right you can work in a certain boutique firm or in certain organizations in certain banks and submit your experience that will be that will be recommended and it will only affect you positively Okay, so another question. I have done CA and I have two years of work experience in currency exposure profile. How much do you think it will help me in clearing the exam by doing self study? I have. I cannot give you a, a pinpoint answer to it, but yes. If you're opting for, for self study, then I must tell you that there are a lot of areas wherein you would need help. Right now, that help can be you can take it from your friends, you can take it from from people who have already cleared FRM. But with self study, you would need a lot of time. And if or if you're already working in certain industry, then time is the only factor which you do not have. 
right so i would recommend that you should you should consult a professional who has already cleared this exam or you should join an institute wherein there is there are a lot of faculty who can help you because there are a lot of areas right like value at risk foundations of risk management wherein you will require industry experience people with industry experience to guide you right see by by mugging up the books by by just uh, solving multiple questions and with some luck you can clear the exam but with that but but will that make any sense to you when when you go for an interview and they ask you some practical questions right you might have some bookish knowledge but frm exam is very much practical oriented oriented towards industry so unless and until you have people who have the relevant experience industry experience to guide you with risk management with value at risk with how how it is treated in the industry it will be very difficult for you to you know uh, uh, correlate what you study from books and how it is practiced in the industry right so that is the gap which can only be bridged if you have guidance from people who are already working in the industry okay another question with how many marks i can clear level 1 as i said there is no marks which it is specified it's relative marking you can clear the exam with 40 marks also you can you cannot clear the exam with 60 marks also right so it's it's all about your rank how you have fared in all the four sections if you are in top 50% of the people then you will always clear the exam right so if you if so again as frm does not expect you to work in a hedge fund industry or a proprietary let's say any any trading firm industry all it expects you to have is a risk management experience now it all depends upon how you mold your experience so people people with accounting background can also have a risk management experience and how do you have it you can always say that there's an accounting risk which i was involved in right i was looking after the accounting risk so the moment you have that ac risk experience the risk term in your experience that will be treated as a valid experience so it, it does not matter whether you whether you are from hedge fund or a proprietary trading desk or or any other field as long as you are able to justify your experience mold your experience in a way that it helps garb to understand that you were working in a risk manage in a risk department right then that will be justified some of the people might say that they are working only for documentation perspective in a particular bank again that is that is also part of operational risk right there is a legal risk there is a documentation risk so all these all your experiences can be molded with risk terminology right so there is no experience without risk let me be very clear whatever you are doing whichever industry you are working in there is always an element of risk that you are covering right explicitly or implicitly right you might not be knowing it but there is always some element of risk which you are dealing with in your day to day life okay another question after clearing level 1 can we get jobs uh, it's difficult to get it again i will be very clear there is no false uh, claim that i want to surround you with right just clearing level 1 will not get you jobs or will not get you a job you need to have both the experience of level 1 and level 2 okay i am working as a fraud risk analyst working in certain company will it give me will it give idea about fraud strategies and charge back report internal audit and such topics internal audit you will get some some experience but no if you are looking for very niche experience no it doesn't give you that that kind of experience it's a broader risk management perspective right so you need to have a risk management framework understanding or understanding of a risk management framework 
Now that risk management framework can be established in any area of risk analytics, right? So that is something which you need to decide upon. It might not be exactly what you're expecting, but the framework will always be valid in your industry. So I have 10 years experience in risk in retail branch banking. Will FRM help? Yes, it will always help. If you want to switch to, let's say some credit risk department in your bank, right? So that you can, you can always justify that you have cleared level one and level two both. And I've seen people switching from one, one vertical to another, but switching from one industry to another might be difficult. I'm working in corporate treasury department. Will it be helpful for me for if, if I clear level one, level two FRM? Yes, definitely. So this again, again, as I said, uh, whether it's corporate treasury, whether, whether you take about any hedge fund, they all look for people who have some experience in risk. So giving FRM level one is, will first of all, um, um, showcase your abil your ability to you know, understand risk and then you can always always justify your experience with what you have learned in fr right so that is always always helpful to be to get the certification whether frm will be useful for erm which is enterprise risk management frm is almost all about enterprise risk management so the last topic which we have which we are discussing foundations of risk management almost 30 to 40 percent or i would say 30 percent of it is dedicated to enterprise risk management right so enterprise risk management is a key area in frm okay i am into internal audit having eight years of experience in in internal audit Will it be useful for me? Yes. Again, as I said, auditing risk is something which you can always consider. And with help of FRM, you can switch between different verticals of the same organization. Right. Again, uh, same question. I have 10 years of experience in retail branch. Will FRM help? Yes, definitely it will help you out. I have already discussed that question. Okay, what are the topics that will be covered in quants, FMP, and value at risk? Okay, so quants is majorly about business statistics. It's not about the math which you had studied in your high school. It is not at all about it. 95% of quants is about statistics and also, and more importantly, it is about business statistics. How you relate the business data, how you understand the business data and apply different statistical techniques right to solve the mystery around that data right so there will be hypothesis testing there will be regression there will be time series all these are part of quants now fmp is something which is very huge it's it's in fact uh, the biggest biggest uh, biggest uh, chunk holder of the entire syllabus if i can use that term right so the majority of that of the syllabus of frm level one is dedicated in fmp so you will have different markets and products like futures forwards options swaps bonds um, mortgage-backed securities ccps clearing departments black shoals model right um, then greeks like Delta, Gamma, Theta, all these are covered uh, in FMP value at risk combined. Yeah. In value at risk, yes, you have the basic definition of value at risk. Uh, how do you measure volatility? And value at risk is something which will be new to almost everyone. If you have not studied something before, then it's a good topic to learn. Okay, another question, FRM has its value only when there's an experience attached with it. If a person clears both the levels, there's no job in India who hires a person who is fresh out of FRM. And for getting FRM charter, a person needs two years of experience, but without company hiring, clearing both the levels goes redundant. See, this is something which is, 
uh, which is a concern for a lot of people. But trust me, there are a lot of companies now who are hiring fresh graduates. Right? FRM is one certification which will help you to get the interview call. And again, I will be very honest with you. It will not help you to clear the interview. It will only help you to get the interview call. Now, what happens after interview call is up to you. How you can how you can sell yourself is totally up to you. How you can drive the interview call in your favor is only up to you, right? So, getting the interview out of hundred, if I have let's like, say hundred CVs in in front of me, and I see ten people have FRM, ten people have CFAs, right? Then I will definitely shortlist those candidates before, right? And I will not shortlist people who do not have any certification. Let me let let me be very clear again. So FRM will help you to get that shortlist. Now, what happens after that is your skill, your selling capability, right? Now, another question is: I am working in a NBFC as a credit risk management, right? I am a CA final year student. Uh, and I have three papers left. I'm going to work in a bank and BFC only after C. Will FRM help me get more knowledge in the loan or related products? Definitely. In credit risk, you'll definitely get a lot of exposure, especially in level two, where the entire topic is dedicated to credit risk. So you should look forward for FRM, definitely. So what's the preparation time required for FRM? Okay, if you, I think you have joined late. So I, as I already said, if you have some experience in these topics, around three months with proper guidance, right, coaching. If you do not have any experience in these topics, then five months with guidance from coaching. Currently only online classes are available, but you can cross check with the, with the sales team, with the support team if, uh, if there's any, if they're planning for any classroom sessions also. FRM, CFA, MBA, CA, right? You can choose all of the four, right? That's the best way, that's the best bet. But FRM and CFA is a deadly combination, right? Unfortunately, people cannot go for CFA in their undergraduates and CFA is more expensive and more time consuming, right? So it takes around one and a half years or maybe two years to clear all the levels of CFA, but it will only give you, it, take, it, will, it takes only one attempt for FRM to, to get it. So ideally you should go for both. So if you're doing, if you're in your BCom last year, right? And um, you're looking for FRM, yes. It will help you to get an interview call, definitely. So you should look, and it's it's uh, it's easier to crack, and it's I would say it's uh, less time consuming than any other certification, right? So if you if you want some credential in finance, then at a lower cost and and with less time, you should look for FRM. Yes. How do you how do you think the risk management industry is going is going to be? Okay, how I guess how will I guess your question is how will the risk management industry go forward in India? Okay, the risk management industry in India is at a very nascent stage, right? It cannot be compared with the risk management in Europe, US, or Australasia, right? Or another or any other developed country. And because it is at a very nascent stage, if you join early, you can grow at a very, very good pace, right? Because the risk management is the way forward. And with Basel norms coming in, the, the graph is only upwards, right? So one of, one of the key areas to consider for growth is FRM. Okay. Uh, Another question, can a person after clearing both the levels start his own practice or business based on what's learned and whatever experience the person gets during practice, can that be taken as an experience? Oh, yes, you can. 
you can use that experience to get the charter holder but how that business is going to survive it's only up to your skill but you can always always start your business definitely what is the minimum salary that i can get after clearing frm so again if you if you google it you will get numbers like 8.3 8.5 9 lakhs per annum but again that's the average salary the starting salary can be around 4 4 and a half lakhs if you're a fresher right out of college right okay Any other questions? Now that we have only ten minutes left, I will quickly wrap up um, with the with the other nitty gritties, right? So let me um, share the slides. So as I said, this is the bifurcation of the topics which we have already discussed. The exam is held two times in a year, one in the month of May and another in the month of November. And it's on third Saturday of May and third Saturday of November. Right? You need to clear level one before your level two papers are evaluated. Something which I've already discussed, right? These are the centers, uh, again, this is not a very, I would say, relevant information because you'll always get it. And these information get updated based on the situation. Okay, so this is the this is an important slide because this talks about registration, right? So the registration part is divided into three parts, the early, early registration, the standard one, and the late one, right? So for FRM, you need to give, you need to enroll yourself first with $400, that's a fixed cost, I would say. Now, basis the registration date, or let's say when you're registering, your exam fees can be $425, as low as $425, and it can go as high as $725. So in total, for level one, you need to pay this exam fee of $425, and along with it, you need to also first register. This registration fees is valid for one year, which means if you clear level one in the month of November, let's say, then you can again appear for May next year without giving this $400, right? So in short, 825 is what will be the best case cost for level one and 350 for level two. So roughly, $11.75, $11 with $11.75, you can get your FRM charter, right? Any questions on this? Is everything clear? So the May registration will open around, I guess, uh, in the month of February, the early one, right? Again, that depends upon GARP. So, but yeah, around February next year, the registration will begin for the exam, the early, early registration part. The enrollment fees is valid for one year. So the question is, what is the validity of enrollment fee? It is valid for one year, yeah. Uh, can you show the syllabus slide again? Okay, I will. I will show it. Just give me a moment. Yep, this is a syllabus slide. So 
so your syllabus your level 1 syllabus as i said is divided into four parts quants fmp value at risk and foundations of risk management each each of the quants and form will have 20% weightage whereas fmp and var will have 30% weightage part 2 is majorly focused on market market risk credit risk operational risk and your other other areas of risk management okay so the couple of things which you which you should have like your garp textbooks or schweizer textbooks along with edu pristine's material plus you also need to have texas ba2 plus or texas ba2 plus professional calculator and these two you need to buy and along with that the garp syllabus sorry the garp material which you can again purchase um, if you are in mumbai you can get it from lakshmi xerox center uh, otherwise you can also get it couriered at your at your place wherever you are in india also um, along with that you will be provided with edu pristine's crisp crisp and concise notes right there will also be mock tests then there will always be online support from faculty and customer care right also in total there will be 15 classes quants will have five classes fmp five classes value at risk three classes and foundations of risk management two classes in addition to it you will also get access to the crash course which is of three classes of 6 hours each and each of these classes the 15 classes which we are talking about will be of 5 hours each right so roughly uh, 75 plus 18 around 85 to 90 hours of classroom coaching or online coaching is what you can expect you should expect so is there any branch office in mumbai for walk in inquiry yes there are there is rather but i am not sure given the situation we you can go to the branch but you can always connect with the customer care and get yourself uh, you know book your book an appointment uh, with the customer care uh, navneet sorry to interrupt you in between yeah we are open okay so any point of time student can walk in oh okay i didn't know that yeah. See, I am from Delhi, so I can only only comment on what I see in news, right? So, <laughs> correct, yeah, yeah, okay, great. Uh, what are Edu Pristine fees? Probably again, I am not the right person. Uh, so if someone, I guess Sukanda, yes, yes. you were there. Yes, no, uh, yeah, yeah, I I will cover that part. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we actually have two types of training. Okay, we have classroom as well as online. So our online fees is twenty six five hundred. So you know, while covering the offerings, I'll cover this part as well. Yeah. Sure. Uh, sir, it's recorded lecture or live lectures online? No, no, it's not recorded lectures. Let me be very clear with you. <laughs> it's a live lecture online classroom. Right, you can see me. <laughs> right if i take the classes you can always you can always see see my face i am the one who will be taking the classes mostly yeah but again this is something that depends upon my availability and uh, yeah so basically the, the 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 training is live it might not be in the classroom setup but yeah it's always live good um what is the salary of a ca plus frm charter say see again this salary part is very subjective right so it all depends upon how much how much experience you have as a ca right but nevertheless frm 
is an icing on the cake. If you're already a CA with FRM, you can you can negotiate as much as you want. So FRM will act as an, as a catalyst, wherein if you go for an interview, you can always negotiate what kind of salary you want, right? Um, so let me just quickly go through um, the main topics. I have I have covered almost all of them, uh, but yeah, again this is something which most of the people have like what is the pass percentage? So historically speaking, the pass percentage is around 45 to 50 percent roughly right uh, for level one and it goes slightly up for level two maybe around 55 percent for level two on an average right so this is the growth for frm as i was saying right year on year if you compare the growth is very steep and in the next five years you will see an exponential growth These are top firms which hire FRM candidates, right? Uh, mostly these are banks uh, spread across the globe, but there are a lot of consultancy, like for example, DCG also, we have some, some risk management consultancy. So we need people with a uh, with good amount of risk exposure. Okay. So, uh, so can I have one question is for you, I guess. Uh, the twenty six yes, point. I I think you can you can see the chat also, right? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably right. you can. All right. Know. Yes, yes. So fee structure twenty six five hundred. It is for training, and your training fees is valid for entire one year. Apart from that, you need to pay obviously examination and enrollment fees to GAP. Okay. So for the examination registration, I mean, that you'll be doing directly with GAP Institute. And for that, that process entire happens online. And the payment part has to be done by credit card. And, uh, yes. you know, for the registration, uh, two documents are required, uh, as in one of this, actually, it can be passport or maybe a driving license. So registration part, uh, you don't know, there would be two things. One you would be doing with GAP Institute and the other one for the classes, you'll be doing it obviously with Edupristi. Yep. Uh, just one point to add on what Sukanya said, your passport should be a valid passport as on the date you're giving the exam. So if the exam is on, let's say, 21st of November, and your if your passport expired on 20th of November, then you will not be allowed to sit for the exam. So on the date of the exam, you should have a valid passport, right? Also, the exam, have, the exam, um, is held from 8 a.m. in the morning till 12 p.m. in the noon. And they are very strict with the timelines. If you are late by even one minute, you will not be allowed to enter the examination. So this is something which uh, I keep repeating. So about Edupristine, um, most of you already know about Edupristine. They are the largest training providers for uh, FRM and oldest one also. And they are authorized training providers, which means they are already registered with GAR, right? So, Education um, is a member of uh, LM Global Education, which is a listed company in New York on on New York Stock Exchange, and Atelm um, in itself is a is a is a huge organization which uh, uh, which trains. Uh, train some around a uh, lot of people across the globe around the year, right? So um, Edupristine, one of the key reasons why you should consider Edupristine is mainly because the focus which the faculty provides or gives to individual st student is exemplary, right? The batch size is, is limited to 25 to 30 students, which makes the class more interactive. Uh, Students can ask their doubts right in the class itself and offline also, which means they can post their questions to customer care, which gets routed through the faculty and then they can get the assistance. In addition to it, you'll also be provided with soft skills training and there will also be a placement assistance, right? As Sukanya said, the, the fees is valid for one year. So yeah, you can, you can, uh, 
enroll it and you can use that fees for the next one year right so education is also delivered high quality lectures in various fortune 500 organizations like bank of in bank of america credit sui uh, kpmg right and they have partnered with lot of educational institutes also like nus which is national university of singapore i am calcutta fms delhi isb hyderabad i am indore right this soft skills training which will which uh, will be covered once you are enrolled so i will not cover this slide right now right the support is is uh, is again as i said it's, it's exemplary you will to you post your questions and within a day you will get a response the rating for a faculty is is again excellent i would say out of 5 uh, it is 4.68 This is something which I have already covered. So it's a 15 days uh, course, five hours each, right? And at the end of the course, you'll also be provided with four mock tests, right? And there's a crash course also. So these are certain testimonials for FRM. any other questions which i which you would like me to address me or sukanya if you have any questions uh, yep okay one question is uh, i don't have relevant experience in risk management i have 5 years experience in different field can i for i'm get me a job in risk management field yes as long as you can justify your experience see if you are if you are if you are thinking that from from hardcore sales you can get into credit risk modeling just by doing frm then that will be too much of of an ask right and i don't want to give you a false justification around it but with sales you can look into the same area maybe sales in risk management field if you are working in it right you can go into a risk management uh, product development right so you can switch different verticals but switching an industry will be difficult but again there are some people who have done it so i do not want to say outright no because there are few exceptions but again uh, these are just exceptions and exceptions prove the rule basically right so uh, there are few people who have done it but again there are only few but lot of people have actually uh, changed uh, their verticals and that's easily possible both in government organizations as well as uh, private organizations okay to clear level 1 how much time to give to studies apart from training of 5 years see as i said in my earlier um, in my earlier discussions anywhere between 3 to 5 months is a good one so one question is um, i have been in bpo operations for 14 years currently as ops manager in finance and accounting how will this course benefit you can always switch into operational risk of a different organization right so that is something which you can do. and since you are already in finance and accounting you can use your accounting skills or finance skills to maybe get get interview calls in a bank also that's not impossible but that will only be in operations right so if you are if you want to get into let's say credit risk modeling then that will be very it will be a uh, far fetched assumption so how much daily study time should i allot again apart from the lectures lectures will happen mostly over the weekend so apart from the lectures if you can spend around 2 to 2 and a half hours daily right then that that should be sufficient so major portion of your time should be dedicated towards what the faculty teaches in the class you should revise and then practice questions passport is a must requirement passport or driving license either one of these will be 
will be sufficient but it should be valid as on the date of the exam okay any other questions guys good uh, so if there are no questions then shall we wrap up so come uh, nabi yep. yeah so i i would like to take 5 minutes that's it actually yeah sure sure so first yeah, of yeah. all thank you so much nabi for explaining career opportunity so well you know for frm and i hope uh, everybody got detailed information about it so what we going to do is after this uh, every every uh, i mean candidate is going to get a call from counselor so in case if you got any queries you know any further queries obviously you can note down those queries and we can have uh, you know one on one discussion for it as now we are already aware F frm is the highest certification you know into risk management area and that too globally recognized right and uh, if you see in the current scenario you know because of this pandemic lot of uncertain events are happening and because of that okay there is a boom into risk management area even if you go on a gap website and if you will read their few articles you know you will see lot of openings are coming up into risk management area because see whenever this sort of uncertain events happens you know you require people who can uh, you can say you know obviously come up with uh, you know the, uh, the options to mitigate those risks who can identify the risk in advance right that is why even even you guys must be aware okay even after 2008 or uh, you know recession in fact uh, the demand for frm had grown that particular time okay so frm is a recession proof career okay and the best part is it can be done within one year okay in fact both parts also can be taken together but yeah it is advisable to take it one by one because uh, at any point of time okay let's say if you're taking up both the parts together on a same day if you are not able to clear part 1 then your part 2 also won't get assessed that is why it is advisable to take it separately but yes if you are confident enough then you can take it up both parts together also that's the best part okay so uh, you know when it comes to frm examination there are uh, you know few important points which i would like to highlight right now uh, your deadline okay for november examination okay is in august okay that is 31st august so we got another 20 23 days you know uh, so if somebody is planning for november examination okay you got another 20 days you know to decide about it in fact our batch is starting from 16th of august and this batch would be on saturday and sunday okay and for 5 hours and timings would be 3 to 8 in fact we have both options available we have lbc batch and uh, let's say if somebody is planning for may examination okay so by that time uh, you know let's let's uh, hope for best by that time we'll able to start with classroom also so we have both options available if student wants to go ahead with purely lbc our fees is 26500 and if somebody wants to do combination of both classroom and lbc our fees is 31500 for it in fact early registration is also on on that all right so there be there would be some concession also which would be available on your fee structure so when counselors would call you obviously at that point of time it depends on the date of registration of yours based on that you will get some concession also on the fee all right and talking about one year validity which we explained okay so how that benefits you okay so as lot of you ask this question right as in uh, you know how much time it would take for the preparation right so obviously that varies from person to person okay so we get a lot of candidates they say that it's been 10 years that we haven't even studied you know how to get it started so normally what we advise our student that you start with that uh, this batch first of all all right so let's say i am confused right now whether to take up november exam or may exam okay so unless and until you won't start you won't come to know so what we advise our student you start with your study first with this batch at any point of time okay if you think that i can't cope up with november examination i want to go ahead with may examination so you can repeat entire one batch and we don't charge a single penny for it so in that case even student would be confident you know and they can clear the examination in first go and talking about edupristine as navneet already mentioned okay so we are the authorized training provider okay in fact for cfa and frm both okay and it's been 12 years we have been giving training okay and we are the largest uh, you know training provider in the industry we train almost around 1500 candidates every year okay so you know and and as you are already aware now edupristine is a part of actelum group which is us listed company 
so being part of us education even our focus is producing the outcomes right and for outcomes for us it would be maximum students you know uh, clearing the examination and maximum student getting placed okay so talking about frm candidates you will find 80% would be working professionals but there 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 is no eligibility criteria as such so nowadays we are getting lot of undergraduates also as awareness is increasing you know about risk management area because after doing frm you can work into any financial institution correct so uh, you know if somebody is undergraduate okay and looking for placement assistance too yeah we do help you out in to end i mean we train you on your hard skill so you can clear the examination then we train you on your soft skill also okay so when you represent you know um, at the time of interview right you will be fully you can say equipped you know your soft skills and hard skills both would be at place okay so even you can visit our website uh, there there we have mentioned a list of candidates who got placed so people are getting placed with companies like eny kpmg you know deloitte okay so these sort of corporate people are getting placed okay and even if you will go and see what sort of career opportunities are available for frm you know you'll be amazed to see that so that is what you know even edupristine also you know make sure that will help you out throughout your journey okay so student can clear the examination and would have successful career yeah so navneet yeah uh, you would like to add any point on this so you almost like uh, covered the entire session in brief <laughs> right so in, in five minutes uh, yeah but yes um, so you almost covered everything um, now if you have any questions you can directly connect with sukanya or, or customer care and um, yep i hope to see you all of you brother in the next session yes and uh, the most important is each and every faculty of yours they have done with frm okay so you will find you know faculties will be having uh, you know that sort of quality that elite background with them many of them done with their cfa frm a lot of them are engineers done with mba ca you know this sort of you know quality background they be always having with them yeah so feel free to ask questions okay we'll get in touch with you and uh, yeah stay connected thank you so much thank you very much guys yep see you thank you